Callahan Frederick Ryder was born March 15th to Dr. and Mrs. Derrick Ryder. He joins his brother Harrison. The rose is in celebration of his birth. And we have some upcoming special services. Palm Sunday is Sunday, April 2nd. Monday, Thursday is Thursday, April 6th. Good Friday service is Friday, April 7th. And Easter Sunday is Sunday, April 9th. There's an Easter egg candy for the annual egg hunt. If you would like to donate candy for the St. John egg hunt, Drop your donation in the bag on the table in the basement, just outside the kitchen. Um, Pastor is also starting a grief support group. We are preparing to start a grief support group at St. John and need to understand how many will be participating so the appropriate number of books can be ordered. There will be future information coming from Pastor Jeff. The fundraiser for the Cancer Society Hanging baskets order forms are in the narthex, and each basket is $17. Order and money are due by March 27. Contact Jacqueline Anslow with any questions. Two St. John representatives are now needed for the ELCA NEO Synod. In preparation for the Synod Assembly on May 12 and 13 in Akron, we now need two volunteers for this event. Please let Bon Pooster know if you're interested in representing St. John at this event. If you have added a name on the prayer list, please let Beth Lackey know if it should be removed. Send text to Beth at 419-606-0787 by Thursday, April 6. Um, there's, list, there's needs listed for the homeless, and also for the food pantries. And at the bottom of your announcements, there's um, services and activities from now and through Sunday, April 9th, that you can look at. Does anybody else have anything? Nope, okay. <laughs>
I was supposed to do this earlier, and I forgot. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see you here this morning on this cold morning outside. It's good that we're in here. If you were worshiping uh, from home, uh, we're happy to have you with us as well. Uh, two notes, uh, one on the service. So the hymn board is correct. Uh, our hymn of the day is hymn number 385, What Wondrous Love Is This? And at least for this week, uh, we're going to be singing just the first two uh, verses of each hymn once again. If we end up being okay through this week, uh, we'll probably go back to singing uh, all the verses, but once again this week, just verse 1 and 2. Um, the actually three things the bell choir will be playing uh, or offering a, a song uh, in worship following the gospel message so we're excited for that and then lastly for the grief group uh, the grief share group right now we do not need anyone we don't expect anyone just to sign up for the class and say yep I'm definitely doing this what we're looking for is to gauge how many people might be interested because the way that the um, the program works is you can order sets of uh, materials in certain amounts. And so we want to make sure we have enough uh, material for everybody, uh, whether that's this time or if we run it again in the future. So if you think you might be interested, you can sign up for it. Um, and then if you say, like, I can't actually do the class this time, that's okay. We're just trying to get a good read on how many people uh, might be interested in a ministry such as that. Is the clipboard going around again for that? Okay, fantastic. Well, I invite the congregation to stand as we begin our service on this fourth Sunday in Lent. We begin with our invocation, our confession, and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt, though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave his only Son so that all may receive life. The promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. Amen. Service continues with our gathering hymn. The first two verses of hymn number 270, God of our life, a glorious Lord.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your Spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the first two lessons. First reading is from 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. <clears throat> Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked to, on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes to, to the Lord, till he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from the, that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 to 14. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them, for it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, sleep or awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. 
the word of the Lord. I invite the congregation to stand for the proclamation of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight, and so they called the parents of the man who had received his sight, and asked them, Is this your son? who you say was born blind. How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him. And the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
congregation may be seated, and I uh, invite the bell choir to come forward. This time, I invite the children forward. I come forward for the children's message. All right, there. 
there she is, Miss Elise. Promising for weeks. How are you feeling? Good. Good. All right. Let's see, see where that Velcro goes. Got it. Push it. Perfect. All right. So you guys can go have a seat back up there. Good at that. I'll be right there. Hold on. So, how are you all doing this week? So, I found these things. Shh, 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 just started. I found these things in the sacristy office over there. I think there might even be more of them somewhere, but I found these ones and they're in there. What do they, what do they say? Um, Don't, it was a test. You're not supposed to say the word that's on there, <laughs> are you? So, we'll let you guys hold them for a moment. Pass a couple that way. You guys can share. Pass a couple this way. Watch this one's a little bit pokey. So, why are they on little flags? Can you guys explain this to me? Yeah, at least. It's for our the, yeah, we, all right, so I know the word that's on them. Why is it written on little flags? Uh, Do you have like a putt-putt course around here or something that they... <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, when she said that word, you would wave the flags. So it was like to like help celebrate, you'd wave the flags when she said that word, okay? So, but there's a time right now during Lent when we don't use that word. Now is the time, yeah. So... Really, we could have taken these a few weeks ago, but it, it applies throughout all of the season of Lent. But why, do you know, without saying the word, do you know what the word means? Yeah, Dom? Mean like, it does mean like rejoice. Um, it means kind of like rejoice, praise God, something really, really good like that. But then, so is it a good thing to praise God and to rejoice? So why would we not want to do that during Lent? Can you think of a reason? Why should we not say it? Now, you know, if I ask the adults, you want to know what one of the reasons they would give why we don't say it? It is. That's the real reason why we don't say it. A lot of adults would say we don't say it because we're just not supposed to and we've always done it that way, okay? <laughs> because that's how church works. But the real reason, Dom, that you gave is because in this season of Lent we're leading up to when Jesus was crucified and remembering that day. And is that a happy day or a sad day? Sad day. Sad day. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of, yeah, I won't go into that with you, but it's, it's a sad day. And so as we, get, we move towards that day, we use this time of the year to kind of say, all right, I need to say sorry for the things I've done. Because does Jesus love us no matter what? Yeah. Jesus loves us no matter what. But does that mean we should just go and do a bunch of bad stuff because he loves us no matter what? Yeah. No. So we know that he loves us no matter what. We know that we also still do bad things sometimes. And so this is a really, really good season to kind of sit there and go, all right, God, I know I've, I've done some wrong things. Thank you so much for still loving me um, and help me be a better follower of you, okay? So what we're going to do today is we're going to do the prayer. Uh, you repeat after me for the prayer, and then they go inside the baptismal font. Is that what we think? Yes? All right. So we'll do that after we say the prayer, Okay. All right, so please repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God we, are sorry we are sorry 
that we do not not always follow you. you. Thank you you for loving us us no matter what. what. Help remind remind Elise Elise to not say that word word until until Easter. We love you. Amen. All right, so I'm going to open this up, and then I think, I think it goes in here. All right, so yeah, there's more in there. All right, so they are all the way down there. My arm's not that long. So we will have to, we'll, do, we'll get them out on Easter, okay? So let's drop those ones in. One, two, three, four. Say, wave goodbye to them. Bye, we'll see you at Easter, okay? All right, great job. My throat's like drier than normal this morning. I don't... Yeah, I'm so, uh, <clears throat> you might get a lot of throat clearing this morning. I'm not sure. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. So one of the things I've heard throughout my ministry, um, and I hear it teaching as well, is just this idea from people, this belief, that if, if we had been around Jesus when Jesus did what Jesus did, then it would have been so great because we would have been able to see it and obviously believed that much more. And in, in a way, we'll read some of the, the Bible stories, the gospel stories, like the one we have today from John 9, and we get confused because we think to ourselves, like, you know, if I had been there, this would have been so obvious to me. And to that I say, I don't think so. This story today is a great example uh, within the Lutheran tradition. One of our, uh, one of our foundations, uh, one of our foundational doctrine uh, stemming from the Bible is this idea, and you've probably heard it before, this idea of Scripture containing both law and gospel. And this reading is just a great example of law and gospel. So in the story, which I'm not going to reread the whole thing again, but in the story, uh, to recap it, uh, you have Jesus is there uh, with his disciples in this one place, and he sees, they see a blind man, and the disciples ask him a question. You know, why was he born blind? So it's, it's his disciples, not even the Pharisees, not the Sadducees, not the scribes, not people who didn't believe or agree with Jesus or didn't follow him, but you have his own disciples. Hey, why was he born blind? And they make an assumption. This was just the belief. Was he born blind because he sinned or was he born blind because his parents sinned? But we know it's one of those two. And Jesus says, no, it's neither of those. He didn't sin. His parents didn't sin to cause this we're actually going to be able to see what God can do through this man's life. And so Jesus uh, spits on some dirt. I'm sure there was a cleaner way to do this, but he chose to spit on some dirt, makes mud, puts on the man's eyes, and says, go and wash in that pool over there. And, And something we went over in the Monday afternoon Bible study is this. The man never asks for this. He doesn't say, Jesus, heal me. He doesn't cry out to the disciples. He just happens to be there. They're talking about him. Jesus says, go do this. He does it, and then he can see. And now the disbelief spreads to the people that witnessed this, the the individuals who saw the man get healed, and then eventually to the religious leaders who were brought in to examine how could this have happened. And the main point of the story as it unfolds is this. Just like the disciples, the the Pharisees uh, and the religious leaders, they know 
the answer to the question before they answer it. Because they already have it in their head. They say, all right, this man is either from God, but we know he can't be from God because he does work on the Sabbath. So we know those two things don't make sense, so therefore he can't be from God. And so they ask the man who has been healed, hey, how did this happen? The man repeatedly goes over it. I don't know. This guy said, do this. He made some mud. I put it in my eyes. Now I can see I'm fine with that. But it doesn't matter how many times they question the man who had been healed because they refuse to believe what they saw. They refuse to believe what they heard. They refuse to believe the testimony of this man. And, and something else that we, we looked over in the Bible study uh, this past week, and these are just like shameless plugs for these uh, amazing ladies who show up to this Bible study, is I believe there's 37 verses, we said, where Jesus is just not in the story. But the Pharisees and the Jews around there, they refuse to believe. And the way that I look at it is like this. Sometimes people can be confronted with the truth, but if they don't want to see it, it doesn't matter. So a little example that I thought of this week, um, and I actually don't know the answer which way this would go, but if I were to get flowers and take them home to my wife, there could be two responses, one or two responses I could get from my wife. The first one's probably more likely. What would the first response be I get from my wife? What'd you do wrong? What did you do wrong? I don't know if I like how quickly you guys all jumped on that. <laughs> but I can say to her, I didn't do anything wrong. I just, I got you these flowers because I, because I love you and I wanted to get these flowers for you. But the reality is, if she doesn't believe that, if she has convinced herself in her mind that the only reason he would get me flowers is if he has done something wrong, it doesn't matter how many times I try to tell her I didn't do anything. Because she's already convinced herself the answer has got to be this. And for the Pharisees and for the individuals who witnessed what's happened with the blind man, it doesn't matter what answer is given by the, blind, the man who was recently blind. It doesn't matter what his, his parents testify to. They've already decided this is not what we believe. We cannot accept this. And this is a beautiful example of the law coming in and, and having people who have been blessed to be a part of a miracle that God has performed, and yet they can't allow themselves to believe in the power that God has. And so we get all the way to the end of the reading, and, and Jesus makes this amazing statement in, in verse uh, 39, I believe. He says, you know, I, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. And, and the Pharisees hear this, and they say, you're not talking about us. Surely we're not blind. And he says, if you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. And so Jesus is telling them, look, if you think you've already got it all figured out, if you think you have all the answers, if you think that you have understood everything that God can do, if you are already at a place where you control how God is allowed to act in your life and in the world around you, 
then you are blind to everything that God is doing. And it doesn't matter what I do in front of you, he claims, because you just are unwilling to see it. And this extends to all of us today. God is constantly acting in our world through various blessings and small miracles and sometimes huge miracles, but in ways that we take for granted and and God is working through those things, but God cannot and will not force us to see them. But the gospel is this. Even if we refuse to see them, God will still keep doing them. And if we're the kind of person who wants to limit God and say, this is what I'm allow you to do, this is how you are permitted to behave and operate in our world, if we do that, then we are blind, and that blindness will rob us of the promises of God and the abundant life that God has has provided for us. The good news is this. For this man who had been blind, nothing else matters. Who is this guy? Don't know, don't care. How did he do it? Well, he did this. How does it work? Don't know, don't care. All I know is this man came and had mercy and compassion and love towards me and healed me even though I didn't even ask for it, even though I did nothing to earn it. This man came and did this for me, and because of that, I am changed. And because of that, it doesn't matter where he's come from, even though we know he comes from God, but it doesn't even matter because all that matters is he has healed me, and now now I see the beauty of God's world. If we are in a place where we are worried that our sins have got us um, chained up, that our sins are causing us to be blind, then what we need to know is that just like this man in this story, it has nothing to do with what we do, but that God has come to us and said, look, see, see, I've taken care of everything. Whether you've reached out to me or not, I have done this for you. I'm going to end with this. The gospel part of our long gospel tradition in the Lutheran church says this, and and it needs to be extremely clear, and it's, it's one of the challenges of preaching and teaching and and of our understanding how uh, the word of, of God in the Bible. But the gospel truly means this. We do nothing. I'm going to say that again. We do nothing to receive God's grace. You could say, well, well, and they've been having these debates for 500 years. You could say, well, this man has to go and wash his eyes, so he has to go and do something. To which our tradition says, what blind man, when offered with the cure for his blindness, would say, no, I don't want that? You could go to somebody who is starving and say, "Um, here, I provided this meal for you. Oh, well, they have to eat it. Yeah, but... We receive God's grace. And as we went over with the children this morning, there is no better example of this, that the healing of this man's sight is phenomenal, it's fantastic, it's something that changed his life, but the even better example that this man will see in the near future is how much God loves us by dying on the cross. Nothing we do except to receive the love, the mercy, and grace 
that flows from the life and death and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. Amen. All right, our hymn of the day is hymn number 385, What Wondrous Love Is This, and two verses. Not any two verses, the first two verses. So don't just sing whatever two you like the best, one and two. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us boldly profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Eternal God, you seal us by the Holy Spirit and mark us with the cross of Christ forever in baptism. Inspire us by your love as together we strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Creating God, by your word you have made all things, and you hate nothing you have made. Teach us to perceive the beauty of the breath of your creation, from the grandest mountain range to the smallest springtime bud. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Powerful God, you anoint kings and establish rulers. Guide the work of heads of state and elected officials. Encourage them to lead with justice and to remove barriers that impede the well-being of all. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Shepherding God, you lead us beside still waters and restore our souls. Keep watch over those who weep. Tend all who are sick and comfort those who grieve especially those we name now, either aloud or silently in our hearts.
Merciful God. God, our host, you fill us at your table with more than we could ever ask. Feed us with hunger for justice. Equip the feeding ministries of this congregation and community. Nourish us so we can nourish our neighbors. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of history, with thanksgiving we remember our ancestors and faith who cared for your people. We praise you for the ways they formed the faith of others and continue to inspire us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. So for at least for this week, we're going to once again just share the peace just kind of by turning, not by walking around and shaking hands. Um, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another. Let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times, in all places, offer in thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God. Amen.
I invite the congregation to stand. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory, born to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And God, the giver of life, Christ the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn uh, is hymn number 343 in the green hymnal. Uh, first two verses, depending on how fast they go, uh, we're still, you're still going to play it, but it will just sing the first two verses. So hymn number 343. <laughs> Serve in love. Thanks be to God. 